there! Welcome back to No Pants Profits. My name's Richard, still coming to you with No Pants, uh, out of the frame, and hopefully plenty of profits. And today we're here to talk about the newest investment from Sweater Ventures, which is called Nomadica. Now this is not something they've sent an email out yet as of uh, 11.34 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, August 22nd, but I want to get into it so that when they send it out, you know, we've got that officially. It has already shown up in the Sweater Ventures app if you know where to look. So Nomadica, I will flip right here and I will show you it is a brand bringing millennials and Gen Z back into wine. Now I wanted to see, you know, what kind of wine do I have to do this video and unfortunately all I was able to find was some Seagram's Escapes wine cooler. So I guess at least this gets us in the mood to talk about some wine. So Nomadica. What is it? Uh, they're in 25 plus venues and amphitheaters. They've had four times growth in 2021 and 2022. And what it seems to be in the most basic sense is canned wine. Food and beverage. We're going to look at their website and everything like that. They offer a sommelier, sommelier, you know, fancy wine snob curated collection of premier canned wines through both direct and consumer wholesale and retail. Because right now, you know, you get wine in the big wine bottle or you'll get these wine coolers, which are really not that great uh they source their wine brands from vineyards all over domestically internationally this you know harvard med school dropout turned wine sommelier sommelier sorry if i'm saying it wrong which probably makes her one of the most interesting founders we've talked to with date she entered the restaurant industry after dropping out worked across notable restaurant groups like moza husk and as a sommelier before starting uh she brings a wealth of experience okay why did they invest uh, founder product fit. Kristen always true to her passion, sustainability. Yep, love for wine, love for wine. I'm not trying. I'm just. I know you can read this all, so I'm kind of going over this rather quick. Uh, strategic value add. So the real question is, what can Sweater bring to the table here? So we Sweater believes they can provide strategic growth marketing value for Nomadica with their community, which is all of the investors and you know their network and word of mouth and people not stocking. Seagram's in the fridge, but having Nomadica in the fridge, um, they can bring that strategic growth, and they have a differentiated sales, a differentiated sales strategy on top of a strong DTC network, which I do think Sweater needs to be a little more. Uh, not everybody's in venture reading this. DTC stands for direct to customer. Nomadica has demonstrated considerable growth with a strong on-premise strategy at premium locations like W Hotels, Surf Lodge and live nation so w hotels and live nation are very big i am not familiar with surf lodge and you can see there's some other investors here and i will see there is an exclusive sweater perk which i will not share the code right there but if you are a sweater member you can dump on the sweater app you can scroll down a little bit further than i'm scrolling right now and you can see the code just like there is a code for iq bar and hopefully there's a code for graza coming real soon but i want to go ahead Let's jump to Domatica's YouTube channel, because that's, that's where I like to start. I like to start, we're, we're watching YouTube, why not a little YouTube-ception? This is Nomadica, and they have one piece of content on their YouTube channel. We might look at their Twitter and other stuff, but let's watch this one piece of content that's on their YouTube channel, and it might tell us a little bit more about the brand that we need to know before we jump into the website, before we jump into analytics of seeing, you know, how popular the website is, the traffic rankings, and other things like that. Let's take a look at their blind tasting. Wines don't look like this unless they're f***ing good. Yeah, that's definitely my kind of wine. Ready to drink some wine. <laughs> I love trying new wine, but I'm not super experienced. I guess over quarantine, I became more of an avid wine drinker. <laughs> I'm a big Cabernet Sauvignon fan. I'm a big red guy. Red blends are usually pretty big for me. I have worked as a sommelier. I usually get my wine from the grocery store. <laughs> I don't know if I've actually tried canned wine. I have had a couple wines from cans, probably about a decade ago, mixed results. I did have one in a juice box, would not recommend. Mm. Thank you. Beautiful, look at that. There's a savory element here. It's fun. Can I drink it now? Oh. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's lovely. 
That's quite nice, wow. It's really good, very smooth, and it's not too sweet. It does have like a long, juicy finish, but I think the sparkling helps it like dry up a little bit. But it's so crisp, I could I could drink this in the summer all day long. This is a beach wine, this is a hike wine. This is poolside, if we're gonna get dramatic, this is like Italian countryside, you know, at sunset. White wine. Ooh. Mm. This is very interesting. Cheers. Cheers. This is so much fun. The oak is very present, but there's tons of fruit too. There's tropical fruit. Very light, very smooth. Nice, the smell is great too. Like it's unmistakably a Chardonnay. Bright, buoyant, tropical. This one has like a, a really great finish to it. I mm -hmm. like that. So this yeah. would go in the picnic basket with mm -hmm. the, the starters. The appetizers. It's not too sweet, not too tart. This is one of my favorite Chardonnays that I've probably tried. I'm definitely getting a nice hint. All right, so we're looking at that video. <laughs> so we're looking at that video and you'll see, you know, if we look at that video, there are 5,000 views and out of those 5,000 views, there are zero comments and there are seven thumbs up. So I will tell you it's very likely a lot of these views are fake views here at no fans profits we don't do fake views you might see a video because that gets 30 50 views well guess what that's just what it's got but another thing that you know i like to look at the full picture so let's take a look at this is their twitter and you'll see that's their twitter we got tweets and replies they have not tweeted since may so not super active on twitter and kind of promoting what's going on you see five wait hold on i said may I didn't mean May of this year. I meant May of 2018. So that is a problem from a social perspective as they, they got to get back on the ball there from a social perspective because they are DTC or direct to consumer. Although they also seem to have a bit of a stadium presence as well as a hotel presence. And I think what's interesting is, I mean, just let's put this into perspective. I'm sorry for my wine burp. Cup of vino? Is that... See... See... O-P-P-A-V-I-N-O. I think that's their biggest competitor. If I can figure out how it's actually spelled, let's 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 see if we can jump to the computer. Uh, this is a C-O-P-P-A-V-I-N-O. In the in the live space, Coupa Coupa de Vino. Sorry, uh, Coupa de Vino. I do have to say, am I over twenty one? You know, this is their biggest competitor in that space. They're not serving in a can, but they are serving in a different vessel that is easy to use, easy to portion, can be used at, at uh, stadiums, can be used at venues, can be used at shows, can be used at different things like that. So Coupa de Vino is, it, that's, when it comes to my head, their competitor is not, not this guy, this little Seagram's, but their competitor is the Coupa de Vinos of the world. And, you know, it's interesting that literally there has not been any activity on their uh, on their site in uh, on their um, on their Twitter, uh, we can see there's a little bit of activity of people talking about their product, but not a lot of activity. So that could actually be some missed opportunity there. Let's just see if I'm if I'm missing something real quick. I'm gonna jump over to Instagram because that's where everybody seems to hang out. Hang out is the Instagram. So let's just see Nomadica N O M A D I C A W I N E. Because if you are going in a direct-to-consumer perspective, you do kind of need that, and it looks like Nomadic's got a little bit, little bit more, a uh, little bit more presence at least on Instagram. But we'll check when that is, April sixth. So at least that seems to be this year. I am going to order some of this wine and try it. I will tell you again, I'm not a wine drinker, but you know we we've got. Well, that's 2019. Um. Yep. Um. Yep. Um, and we'll see. yep. Okay, she's just talking about uh, one of the canned wines she drinks. It's a byproduct of winemaking where water is added to the already pressed grapes, stems, and seeds, and then fermented. This low waste wine creates a lighter, lower alcohol drink reminiscent of. Reminiscent of not wine. But I think that's the interesting thing is that, yeah, their biggest competitor, like we were saying, is Copa Divina. Uh, if I do take a look, they don't have any existing investments on Crunchbase, nor does it say that Sweater is an investor as of yet. So there's no direct investments there on the West Coast of the U.S. Founded in 2018, company is for a profit. Uh, it's not really showing a history of investments. So it is kind of totally private. And this is kind of their first step into the... Uh, into the venture capital world, and it's only got one uh, 
one employee listed on there now. But what you'll see is their visit growth. When we look at things like this, their visit growth is up dramatically, 157% month over month in visit growth. The, you know, the number doesn't matter. We might be getting in really early, but that 157% up over time uh, is really good. Monthly visit growth, 132%. There's been some traffic in India. And if we look at engagements, we'll take their visit duration is uh, 3 minutes and 45 seconds. The monthly rank growth, so how it ranks to other things. Visit duration growth. Uh, we've got page views, bounce rate, and everything like that. Bounce rate is the number of people who go there. 70% uh, of people who go to the uh, Nomadica website, which we're going to go to right now, they'll generally leave without clicking through another page now that might be exactly how the website set up that it's all on one page but let's just see so we're going to go to nomadica's website which is just so i can give you it is explore nomadica.com and when i come up i love this as me personally i love the upsell i love to take the ten dollars off your first order i do have to do i have to give my birthday i'm gonna try and get around not giving them my birthday because i don't want everybody on the on the video not my birthday let's see if i can skip out of there are you over 21 Yes, indeed. So Pneumatica is hand wines. Let's look at their website. Let's see what's going on. Hey, look, they've got always free shipping, which is a cost. And you've got a red blend, rosé, white, sparkling white from $58. Well, yeah, they, they're not messing around. Uh, yeah, so you can see this is where they got the primary amount of their YouTube views is directly on their website. Again, the legitimacy of them, it's questionable. I mean, only... Seven thumbs up out of 6,000 views. Weird, uh, but, you know, could happen with an embedded thing. And you see they're in GQ. Uh, canned for sustainability. So, yes, aluminum. The one thing I think what's weird, if you know anything about recycling, it's almost not worth recycling most things in this world, but aluminum cans are one of the things. Aluminum cans, aluminum bottles. If you got those aluminum beer bottles even. Uh, here, I got... Eh, let's reach back here. I've got, like, an aluminum water bottle. So you've got these nice little aluminum bottles that are not plastic. Aluminum is really actually worth recycling. So that's not environmental BS. That's actually truth. Uh, you know, how the can earns its canvas. So they're getting art, other things like that. Our story. Uh, let's just take a look. So yeah, you've got our story. There's Kristen, who dropped out of... Uh, she say it there? <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, dropped out of her pre-med degree at Harvard. Why cans? Because they're a lot more recyclable. And then there's their their core selection of the different things that they actually have. I'm not sure what that is. Stock kits. Find your nomadica. Oh, that's just a <laughs> that's just to check uh stock. That's just that's just to check if they've got stock. So oh sorry, I wasn't showing my screen. Uh it's just to check if they have stock. So if I go down here. But uh, hi, I love it. So not only do they have a wine shop and an adventure pack, if you wanted to try everything, you could get the adventure pack right here for 78. Oh, God. Or no, 64.40. Now, remember, if I subscribe, now this is very similar. If you've watched the video before this, if you haven't, I highly recommend. It's very similar to IQ Bar. Is that if you sign up for a recurring thing, because this was the sweater announcement right before. If you sign up, you get you got that 10%. It's, it's like it's like night and day that we're seeing right here. You know, if you sign up before you get that. So it's essentially an, <laughs> a less healthy version of IQ bar. And it's kind of breaking into certain different segments. If I wanted to get that four pack of rose, and like I said, if you are watching this and you are already a sweater cashmere fund investor, you can get a 20% off coupon code in your sweater app. When this shows up on the sweater app, which it should be showing up uh, relatively soon because it is already showing up on mine. Uh, but there hasn't been an email that says out yet. But you can see there, you can get a one-time purchase for $78. What's that $78? Let's not lie. Always complimentary shipping means we've built shipping into the price. I'm not against that, but, you know, people refuse to pay for shipping. I refuse to pay for shipping for online things. But when you're refusing to pay for shipping, guess what that means? That means shipping is already built into the price. But I do also like, if we take a look, they've got Club Nomadica. Choosing the right... Let's, let's take a look at this. Oh, that's just a pretty picture. thought there was audio there. So you can join these clubs and you get quarterly 36 cans. That's $180 per delivery. No, I don't need that much. I don't actually drink that much wine. They have virtual tastings. 
So you can actually request a virtual taste. Oh, that's cool. You can request a virtual tasting with their CEO. With their founder and some of you are taking on a journey across our vitriols. That's really interesting. Uh, you know, you could do it for your coworkers, other stuff like that. Fill out the form below. Accommodate your group. Group size zero to five. Virtual tasting your book separately from the ordering process. Once you have a virtual tasting book, please ensure your wine is ordered at least two weeks before. Wow. That's really actually kind of cool. Uh, I'd love to have Kristen on to the channel to kind of learn more. Again, I, I'm, I'm not a wine drinker. I'm the guy who thought it was acceptable to grab a Seagram's wine cooler uh, after midnight to, to review this. But, uh, you know, I, I'd love to hear the story and I'd love to hear what's going on. But, you know, their wines are sustainably farmed, minimal sulfur, no sugar, and vegan. Going in the health food craze, very similar to IQ Bar, very similar to Graza. Uh, one of the main things about the Sweater Cashmere Fund is things that their users will actually use. So it's kind of interesting. This is, again, it's in a DTC or direct a customer, but I also want to see where you can actually find it. But again, if I go to, if I go to Instagram, I'm going to open Instagram real quick. I mean, still the most recent post on, you know, I, I, I kid myself, I guess... They must have a different Instagram. Most recent post on Instagram was an hour ago. When your goal is to make great... Well, okay, let's just take a look around Instagram a little bit. Oh, okay. One day ago. So I guess I was just looking the wrong social places. And hey, I admit when I'm wrong. Tacos and wine. Ooh. Learn about tacos and wine pairing. They have a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a following. Not insane. So this might be one I like it because it seems like sweater is super duper early here. Now, I can't taste the wine right now, but, you know, if you are one that wants to taste the wine, you can definitely go ahead and uh, if I go ahead, I, I don't want to show my zip code here, but let's see if we can find it if it's available in my area. Let's just see. So you go down the bottom to stock it, and I'm going to put in a zip code real quick. Let's just see who's got it. Nobody has it within 10 miles of me. Let's go 100 miles. So in the South Florida area, no one actually happens to have it right now. But it's in bar taverns. Here, I'll show you where. I'll show you where it is. Uh, this is what it's saying. It's in bars, uh, concessionaires, convenience, gas stores, general merchandise, hotel, motel, liquor, package store, restaurant, supermarket, transportation, small grocery store. There's a lot of different places that it can actually be in but what i think is interesting is i think we're kind of really early to the party here they've got that one employee and i i do find it quite amazing that if you really wanted to you could actually go ahead and you could get a virtual tasting with kristen o who's uh the head of this and it's it's a very interesting i've not really seen canned wine again like i said the closest thing i've ever seen is a copa de vino but if you do look at the growth over time, the growth over time is a very interesting thing. They've grown during the pandemic. This is a pandemic thing. This is a future of work thing. Again, when we talk about sweater and we talk about future of work, imagine, you know, you, you're running an office and you've got everybody working from home. Imagine just simply, you know, you order them all a taster box of this wine that's got the four or five different wines they have inside of it. And what do you do? You request a virtual tasting with Kristen Ho. It's a great employee engagement activity. I love it for that. It's unique. If you ask, what is the USP? What is the unique selling proposition? Right now on their website, the unique selling proposition is Kristen's story. And even Sweater is very much stressing that, you know, Kristen's story is the unique selling proposition. The unique selling proposition is that they're doing cans. Because, again, in the in the wine space, you're going to get a poured glass of wine, which is a pain in the butt for them to serve it at venues and things like that. Or you're going to get the main packaging thing that you'll see is actually the Copa de Vino. So that Copa de Vino is pretty much the main way you'll see wine. So they're trying, Nomadica is trying to break into canned wines and they're doing a curation of wines. I think I might order some and I might try and set up a uh, a tasting with Kristen O oh, and we can ask her a little bit more about the company and understand what's going on. But this is the newest investment from Sweater and the Sweater Cashmere Fund, Nomadica which you will see in your sweater apps very soon and should get an email announcement on it as well. A brand bringing millennials and Gen Z back to wine. Uh, and I'm going to have my not great wine right now, which is a wine cooler, which is all I had to effectively shoot this video. Reminding you, in your investing time, when you wear no pants and you're investing, 
There's only one thing left to lose, and that's your shirt. If you got any questions, post them below. This is Richard from No Pants Profits saying bye for now.